Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at this 20,100 milliamp hour power bank from RAV Power. Now this is probably one of the largest power banks I've ever owned and you can see it is pretty big so hopefully I won't be leaving this anywhere and forgetting about it because it's quite a big thing to forget about. Now 50 US dollars, this is not the cheapest power bank on the market, but what you have to remember is that you're getting genuine capacity. You will get a genuine 20,100 milliamp hour battery capacity, whereas the other ones which cost say $20, when you open them up you'll find they're just using cheap battery cells and you're only getting a fraction of what was promised. Now the big selling points of this power bank, apart from its huge capacity, is the fact that it has a type C free amp input output and that can be used to charge the power bank or to pull power out and type C USB is becoming a lot more popular now you'll find it on a lot of the newer Android phones you'll find it on the MacBooks very common um, and becoming more common by the day you also have a regular micro USB input and this does support quick charge 3.0 and quick charge 2.0 1.0 of course because it's backwards compatible and that means that you can charge this thing at a crazy fast rate and I'm going to show you that soon not only does it support quick charge going in but it also supports quick charge coming out and again 3.0 2.0 1.0 because it's all backwards compatible so we've got a quick charge port and then we've got a regular 2.4 amp output and the good thing is you can actually use all three of these ports at the same time so you could charge three different devices at the same time now i mentioned that this can charge the new macbook as well but it's not that good i'm going to touch more on that later but yeah stand by if you're interested in that now in the box you get the power bank itself and you get a nice case. I think every power bank should come with a case to be honest. And I'll just put this on here so you can see. It's quite a tight fit. I would probably like it to be a little bit looser so that you could really cover the top. But in all honesty I think this will do just fine. Now as for the looks of it, I have to admit it's not one of my favourite looking power banks. But to be honest, when you've got a power bank with this many batteries inside, it's kind of hard to do anything with it. Um, my favourite power bank in terms of looks is this one from Voxlink, which has this nice aluminium top, which also acts as a heat sink. It's got this kind of rubberized texture on here, and that's my favourite one. Um, the RAV Power, yeah, it's kind of boring and black. It's all plastic, um, not very fancy to be honest. The lights are okay, but again, kind of boring and the biggest complaint would be the weight distribution they've obviously got all the batteries here I'd say probably up until this point and then the circuitry here and in the hand you can feel that it's you know it's kind of not very well weighted it's yeah I mean it's okay but I would have preferred if they somehow made it you know a more even weight across the whole thing but honestly when you go for a power bank this big you're not really bothered about the looks you're bothered about the functionality and what you can actually get out of this thing what i want to do now is test how fast we can charge this thing because the problem with big power banks is if you can't charge them fast you pretty much just end up having to leave them for a day or so just to recharge now this one is meant to support quick charge 3.0 so let's put that to the test using my usb watt meter so i've got the watt meter plugged into this usb charger you can see it supports qualcomm quick charge 3.0 and that's going into the micro USB quick charge on the power bank. So let's have a look at the watt meter and see how much power we're pushing into this. And there you go, you can see we're at 7.5 volts, 3 amp, 23 watts. Now that is very, very, very impressive. 23 watts we're pushing into this thing. If you compare that to a regular charger, which just pushes in say five or 10 watts, that's an incredible rate. That means this thing is gonna charge incredibly, incredibly quick. And I've got another quick charger, which I tested with this, and I got it up to 24 watts. So it's true, it really does support Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0, and it's incredibly fast. That means you can charge this thing in no time at all. And to be honest, I wouldn't want a power bank this big unless it supported Qualcomm Quick Charge. Now, of course, if you don't have a Qualcomm Quick Charge charger, you're going to have to use a normal USB port. So let me plug it into a normal port and see how much power we can draw out. And there you go, around 5 volts, 2 amp, give or take 10 watts, pretty much what you'd expect. And that's still a lot better than other power banks, but honestly, I wouldn't bother buying a power bank unless it supports Quick Charge, and then I would make sure I bought a charger which can also handle Quick Charge. Now the power bank is also meant to support quick charge on the output. So what I'm going to try and do is charge this other power bank which supports quick charge from this and see if we really do get quick charge. So I'll plug in my USB watt meter first and then I'll plug in my power bank. So what we've got is this power bank charging this one. Now normally when this is being charged with quick charge the 
LED here on the end would be lit up, but it's not lit up. Let's see how much power we're managing to draw. You can see this is just normal charge speeds, around 5 volts, 2 amp, 9 or 10 watts. That's definitely not quick charge. Let's try with another power bank, this one here, which supports quick charge, 2.0. Now again, this one normally has an extra LED lit underneath if it's charging by quick charge, and that's not come on. Let's see how much power we're drawing. Okay, around 11.8 watts. It's okay, but it's not quick charge. That's very strange. Let's try swap the charge cable and see if that makes any difference. Nope, still no Qualcomm quick charge. Um, okay, that's kind of surprising. So I guess I'm gonna have to contact Rav Power and ask them about this because we're able to use Qualcomm Quick Charge going in, but for some reason we're just getting normal USB out, no Quick Charge, and that's with two different power banks. So I don't think the problem is on my side, I think it's really with this power bank. Let's try attach my USB dummy load and see how much power we can actually pull out of these USB ports. Okay, so I'll be turning these knobs to increase the power and you'll be able to see it here on the monitor. Let me bring this closer to the camera. So right now we're at around five watts, one amp, seven watts, eight watts, nine watts, 10 watts. Let's keep going, see how much we can pull out of this. We're around 2.5 amp right now, which is probably the highest that you'd get on any device. Let's keep going. Okay, you can see that once you get past 2.4 amp, the voltage actually drops. So the maximum we're able to get out of that port is around 10 or 11 watts. Not too bad. Now that fan that kicked in is just on my dummy load here. Let's try the other USB port and see how much we're able to pull out of it. So right now we're at 6 watts. Let's go up. 7, 8... 10 watts, okay, we're at 2.3 oh, amp, we're getting a little bit of voltage drop, let's keep going, at 2.6 amp, we're not too bad, 4.7 volts still okay, okay, we're now at 3 amp, 4.72 volts, that's, that's okay, that's reasonable, and that's about the maximum of my dummy load, so around 4.7 volts, 3 amp, give or take 15 watts. That's not too bad, that's really not too bad, considering that's just normal USB, that's not Qualcomm quick charge. And this is a little bit noisy because it's cooling down my dummy load. Now one of the questions that often comes up is whether your power bank supports pass-through charging. That's where we can charge our power bank from the wall and then charge something from our power bank. So right now I've got the power bank charging, you can see the lights are going up there, and we're going to try to plug into my iPhone and see if we can charge at the same time. And there you go, it took a second, I don't know why, but we are charging. So the power bank's being charged, and then the power bank is charging my phone, or it's flowing through. I mean, I don't know the exact mechanics of this specific power bank, but basically, yes, we can charge the power bank and pull power out of it at the same time. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I normally measure the capacity of the batteries. I run them down with a one amp load and see if what they've stated is really true. Now, I've already seen other reviews that have said it is genuine, but I'm gonna do my own test, but it's gonna take so long to run this thing down that I just don't have time right now. So if you check the video description down below, uh, I'll do that test and then I'll put there whether it's genuine or not. But based on what I've read so far, I believe it will be genuine. So what do I think about this power bank? Well. It's excellent. If you want something that has a lot of capacity and can charge super, super fast, like 24 watts, then this is the power bank for you. I'm a little bit concerned that I wasn't able to get quick charge coming out, but then, you know what? I don't think I've ever actually used the quick charge coming out of a power bank. I've only ever used it going in so that I can charge a power bank super fast. When I'm taking power out, it's normally just to my iPad or my iPhone. Um, or something like that, and they don't even support quick charge. So I guess I'm not actually that bothered. I don't really care, but you know, because it says it supports it, I would like it to actually work. Maybe I just got unlucky.
And one thing I mentioned earlier was about the Type-C free amp output, um, which they say can charge things like the MacBook because it has the USB-C type connector. Well, it's true, it does charge it, but I was only able to pull out around 10 watts. I mean, I'll show you now so it's on camera, but this thing basically consumes a flat 10 watts when it's doing very medium work, like light surfing. Once you start doing YouTube or something like that, this thing jumps up to around I don't know, maybe 14, 15 watts. So with the 10 watts I was able to get out of this, it was only able to maintain it. It wasn't actually able to charge it at the same time. And the official charger is around 35 watts. Now normally you'd use the official Apple cable that came with your laptop. One end would plug into the laptop, the other end would plug into the power bank. But because we want to measure this on my watt meter, I'm gonna use this little adapter that lets me convert it and then we can put my watt meter between the two. So the power bank is now charging the MacBook. Let me show you how much power is being consumed. You can see it's around 10 watts, two amp under five volts because there's some voltage drop. Now they say on here that this is actually three amp um, but I don't know, I mean that could be the MacBook. To be fair, the MacBook is very picky about the power source it's connected to. It tries to do some kind of negotiation thing and of course being Apple, you know what they're like, they always make things a little bit more complicated to try and stop third parties from, you know, making accessories that aren't licensed, etc, etc. So it might not be the fault of the power bank. It does charge it, but it won't add capacity while you're using it because as much as it's putting in, you're using it at the same time. So it will ex extend your battery while you're using it, but it won't add a charge. But if you close the MacBook, plug it in, then yes, it will fully charge the MacBook given enough time. So I think that pretty much sums up the RAV Power power bank. If you do have any questions, put them on the comment section down below. Um, is it my new favorite power bank? No, I think I would still have to stick with the Voxlink as my favorite because it's been so reliable. I think it looks great. The quick charge works perfectly and it's very portable. So this is still my favorite. But would I recommend this if you need a high capacity power bank? Yes, for sure, because this thing charges so incredibly quick. Recharge it, go back on the road, recharge it, go back on the road. It's absolutely perfect for that. So if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.